Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Crab Tribe. I have, uh, you know, a nice little outline script here. I've got my cat in my lap and a tall glass of water here. And uh, this poor little guy's interrupted my recording a few times, but if you hear a meow, I'm just going to accept it now. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the card Hive Mind. And it's a silly card and uh, somewhat of a salty card. It's not too liked to uh, someone in my playgroup, uh, but I think it's fun. So I want to talk about some ways in which you could use it and uh, some legitimate ways besides trolling. Uh, so what is it? It is a six cost enchantment that says whenever a player casts an instant or a sorcery card or spell, each other player uh, copies that spell and then they can choose new targets uh, if it's a targeted spell. So here is just an illustration how it would work with a very simple spell, Shock. Uh, so let's say uh, it's your turn and you have a Hive Mind. So you are the active player with priority. So the stack is cleared and you cast a Shock. So what will happen is immediately Hive Mind will trigger and each other player will create a copy of Shock. It's very important that they create a copy, they don't cast a copy. Um, and they have to choose their target uh, as they as they create it uh, because it's a targeted spell. That's how targeting works. Uh, but then it attempts to resolve in reverse churn order. So they create them in churn order, and then they resolve in reverse churn order. So it, the stack always works where it is last in, first out. So the last player to uh, create the spell, uh, they are the first player to have their spell go off if it does resolve. Now, this is a very simple example with one spell, uh, but if you don't like someone shocking you, you could cast a counter spell, uh, which is also another a simple spell, but uh, the problem with, with counter spells is with Hive Mind, everyone gets a copy, and then everyone can choose to counter your counter, or they can, I guess, counter someone else's shock here, uh, or uh, they can counter the counter to someone's counter, uh, and things can get confusing that way. So it might help to, uh, you know, put your cards on top of one another, or kind of draw out a diagram here, uh, or just make a mental picture here of the stack. And then some more rules here. Uh, so when Hive Mind triggers, it does create a copy of the spell that copies the X value, uh, and any modes that are chosen in modal spells, like uh, Boros Charm there. Uh, for two costs, it gives you the option of three things. You can choose one. Anything that says choose one or more, uh, whatever is chosen uh, by the caster, the copies are created with the same, uh, the same options. So like if they chose the first option to deal four damage, uh, all the copies are also going to do four damage. They can't change uh, the choice with the copy. And then obviously the X values are copied with the same X value. So Finale, Revelation, or any of the finales uh, have the same X value. Uh, additional costs. So the copy, the controller of the copy cannot choose to pay additional cost. So Burnt Offering there, as additional cost to play the spell, sacrifice a creature. So only the caster has to sacrifice a creature. The other... Uh, spells are created as though they had, you know, as though they had uh, paid the additional cost. So they don't have to pay it again. Uh, so additional cost might be sacrificing a creature. It might be discarding a card uh, or something else like that. But only the, uh, the caster has to do that. And speaking of caster versus creating, uh, the last there on the, on the right side says that the copies of Hive Mind are created on the stack they are not cast. So that means you will not get cast triggers uh, like double vision. Although uh, if something says, uh, like those Magecraft cards from Strixhaven, uh, they do specify in the text, whenever you cast or create a copy, then such and such happens. So that is kind of an exception. Uh, so one card I found that is interesting, uh, but actually uh, doesn't really work the way you think it would here, is Cavervex Spite. It's a three cost black card from Visions. It says sacrifice all permits, discard your hand, and target player loses five life. So if you have Hive Mind and you play this spell, 
uh, you will not make every other player sacrifice all permits and discard their hand because the errata of this says as an additional cost to play this spell, you have to do uh, the following, sacrifice all permits and discard your hand, and then target player loses five life. So you would look like kind of a dummy trying to work, make it work that way. Uh, although it is kind of a combo piece with Baron Glory um, and Academy Rector. Uh, I guess it's kind of the only good use of this card. There's a lot better ways to make someone lose five life. So that's just kind of an example of a card where it doesn't work the way you think it would. So anyway, uh, those are that's kind of the rules. But I want to talk about what are some legitimate ways to use Hive Mind, and what are uh, some ways that I use it. So the first option here, uh, and by the way, this is uh, going to be the outline for the video. So if you want to jump ahead to one topic, or you want to jump back to another one, I'll have timestamps. Uh, the first uh, kind of route you could take with this is just embracing the chaos. Maybe you are a chaos player and you love unpredictable things. You love uh, chance-based things, coin flips. Um, so that would work with uh, Hive Mind because Hive Mind has a lot of weird interactions. Um, and I think every time you play Hive Mind uh, with a different play group, it's almost like a new experience. So if you like that sort of thing, that's good. And then there is the super mill, I call that, uh, because if you do all the wheel spells and all the mill spells, uh, well, they happen uh, four times at once. So it just kind of speeds up the emptying of the library uh, for yourself or other players. You can do the speed run challenge here, I call that, uh, because if you cast Earthquake uh, or spells like Earthquake, it's going to do damage to each player. And it's going to happen uh, the same spell, uh, you know, four times with Hive Mind, uh, assuming you're in a full pod. And so it'll speed up the game and potentially end the game in a tie. And then there is uh, actually ways you can win uh, pretty quickly with uh, all the pack spells. And I call them jank because really they're not terribly consistent unless you're using all the pack spells. Um, and we'll get to that. So the first kind of uh, archetype uh, or method you can use Hive Mind with is the Chaos Route. So uh, I kind of mentioned in another video, I have Zender Split and Oakum as my Chaos Commanders. And uh, sometimes it's fun. You just like to do silly things. You like shenanigans. Uh, these are some commanders you can use. Uh, Ruhan, he's random, uh, but he's based on combat. Uh, so you can kind of go a Voltron route, and that uses white. You can use Nira. You can use, uh, you know, Rakdos, uh, that donate commander. And uh, this is a fun thing to do. So, like, uh, I had uh, Chaos Warp on screen before. It shuffles a permit into its owner's library, and then they reveal the top card. If it is a permit, they put it onto the battlefield. It's random. You don't know what you get. You could actually get uh, the same card that you just shuffled into your library. I've seen it happen. You know, you could quote unquote upgrade that card uh, with the wrap worlds, warp worlds, which is essentially the same thing, but for every permit on the battlefields. Um, and with hive mind, that happening uh, four times could be kind of annoying. So I will admit freely that uh, the chaos route is um, maybe the most disliked because it has. Uh, very long churns, things that take forever to resolve. Uh, I guess a uh, wrap world would be good if you had a lot of ETBs and you had the most permanents. Uh, otherwise, you know, think about the board and the other players and think about their feelings. Uh, so these are two other cards I would really consider not using. Uh, Scrambleverse and Thieves Auction. You know, especially if you have new players that don't understand the game um, as well as you. Uh, it's just going to be not a good experience. Um, you know, it does speed up the game, I guess, Scramble Reverse, so if you're into that. Uh, so here's something you could do. Uh, Temporal Extortion and Time Sifter. So if you think back to uh, the chart I showed a minute ago about the stack, uh, well, these cards actually uh, act like they create a, um, a stack of churns. So there's a queue of churns. <laughs> So you have to you have to actually uh, remember who goes when um, based on you know what was revealed with Time Sifter, 
uh, or you know whose turn it is with an extra turn spell, uh, you know, and uh, it can get confusing. So if that's your thing, uh, you go kind of the extra turn route here. Uh, by the way, with Temporal Extortion here, uh, when you play Temporal Extortion, any player can pay half their life uh, to counter it. Uh, so remember that that translates to when you cast Temporal Extortion. And so only the caster, the original caster, is actually casting it. The other players with Hive Mind are creating copies so that you can't actually counter uh, their copies, at least uh, with that text there. Uh, and this is something I think is hilarious. Uh, Cruel Entertainment. It is a 7-cost card, a bit expensive, but it says choose a target player and then another target player. And then the first player controls the second player uh, and then vice versa on each of their turns. Uh, and it kind of looks like the art there where you're just kind of behind the scenes, you know, watching the action. And with Hive Mind, this is going to happen. Um, you can actually control someone, controlling someone else, controlling someone else. Um, and you're going to play kind of like musical chairs. <laughs> and uh, it can get kind of silly. And if you want to kind of make it uh, even more hilarious, uh, you can include True Believer uh, or, you know, Teo, the Light Shield, or uh, one of the Ley Lines makes you Hexproof. So if you are Hexproof, you cannot be the target of any Cruel Entertainment so you'll just sit back and, and watch the chaos from behind the scenes, behind the curtain there. And uh, if you have black or white in your deck, that's something you could do. If you're, gonna, if you're going kind of the uh, mono blue or kind of heavy blue strategy, uh, you could include some of these cards. I'm just kind of throwing out examples, but chaos has you know, a broad you know, range of cards you could use. Shared fate is interesting because it says if a player would draw a card... Basically, instead, you're going to draw from another player's um, uh, library, and uh, it's exiled uh, as it's as you draw it, so you can't, I guess, discard it. Uh, but you can look at that card, and you can play it as though it were in your hand. So if you kind of uh, have a big draw engine, you have a bunch of wheels, or you just wait a, uh, quite a few turns, uh, and then you play Show and Tell with Hive Mine out, uh, it, it can get kind of weird because people don't know the cards in their hand. They don't know what they do because it's it's not their deck. Uh, but they just put down a card and uh, there's not uh, a lot of awareness about what it does or what interactions it has. Uh, and they're going to do that, uh, you know, three times, actually four times. Uh, one trigger, one trigger, one trigger. Um, and I, I, think, I, I think that's kind of funny. Eternal Dominion uh, on the left side there. It says, search target opponent's library for an artifact creature, enchantment, or land card, and put it on the battlefields. So for 10 cost, that's kind of hefty. Uh, but it does have epic. So for the rest of the game, you cannot play spells, but on your upkeep, you copy uh, this spell. So it's kind of like a race. Uh, if with Hive Mind out, everyone is basically not playing their deck. And it's kind of a race to see who can get, uh, who can kind of uh, mix and match combos from other players' decks. So I think that's kind of interesting, and if you like that uh, kind of play style, you could do the same thing. But that, yeah, that's the Chaos route. Uh, you could include also, I didn't put on here, uh, but Mass Polymorph is an interesting card, and there are so many cards in the Chaos uh, you know, realm, but that's what Chaos is. And then we have the Super Mill, the Super Salty route. Uh, so I kind of put some Demir Commanders here on Grothrod, the Trickster, and the God of Deception. Uh, but of course, I guess this could work with Mono Blue. Uh, so Mill means they put cards from their library uh, into their graveyard directly. And uh, if a player has no cards in their library and they would draw a card, they lose the game. So uh, you could use Windfall, for example, and then they put seven cards in their library and they draw some more, or uh, potentially seven if someone has seven cards. Uh, and you can just imagine if that happens four times, uh, well, that's 28 cards total. You could, you know, quote-unquote upgrade that with Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Uh, so instead of, you know, seven, it could be, you know, uh, half their deck. Um, because as long as they get to CMC value 20, that's when it stops with Tasha's Hideous Laughter. And this is worse because they have to exile cards. Um, and uh, if that happens four times with um, Hive Mine out, 
it can get uh, kind of long and kind of uh, annoying. Uh, and you are going to be the opponent of your opponents for uh, their copies, so you're going to have to do it too. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's just kind of the... Uh, that is what it is with Hivemind. Um, and here are some cards you could include uh, in a mill strategy or a draw strategy here uh, with uh, Hivemind. Uh, with Ominous Seas and just one wheel card with Hivemind, um, you're going to get at least two Krakens, uh, maybe three. Uh, Notion Thief, if you want to draw their cards instead, um, and then Underworld Dreams, and any of the draw punishers, uh, it's going to be a, a good day for you. Uh, you want to have ways, things that benefit you. And here are just some more examples of uh, mill cards. Uh, there is Fractured Sanity for three blue. Each opponent will mill 14, and remember that for their copies, you are the opponent of your opponents. So you're going to mill cards too, and if that's in your favor, that's more power to you. Uh, Traumatize is a target player is going to mill half their, their library. Uh, so since that is target player, you guys can talk amongst yourselves and um, you know target one player or you know work it out uh, with each of the copies from Hivemind. Uh, there's Mind Grind. Uh, and then Paradigm Shift, I think, is the most interesting card here because it uh, exiles your library, and then you actually um, shuffle your graveyard, and now that is your library. So uh, you can use uh, Tormord's Crypt or really any of the cards that exile uh, libraries, exile graveyards, uh, and then play that card, and then now no one has a graveyard or a library. Uh, so that could win you the game right away if you you know, make them draw an additional card. Uh, their library has no cards in it, they lose. So yeah, these are just some you know good examples. There are some not so good examples and uh, somewhere in between of the mill strategy. Uh, and the next kind of archetype or uh, I guess strategy I thought of with Hive Mind is what I call the speed run challenge. So you have Earthquake, you have Hurricane, and you have two cards that are similar, uh, Fault Line or Squall Line. Uh, which do basically the same thing. Uh, and then Hive Mine. So the idea is to pour a lot of mana into one of those spells, and then it's copied four times, or copied as many times as there are players. Uh, and it ends the game, or speeds up the game, um, you know, that turn. Uh, and so let's just say I put in, you know, seven mana to Earthquake. So seven times four, uh, it's gonna do seven 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 uh, 28 damage uh, in one turn is pretty bad uh, for for the board uh, and if you want to make it even better uh, for you you could throw in uh, the brash taunter you could throw in a fiery emancipation and then uh, the wrath card or the new red dominus also does double damage and if you include all of those cards uh, you'll probably kill your opponents before it gets to you, or before you know the whole thing's done resolving. Uh, so, as kind of an example of this, uh, kind of have that visual picture of the stack. Let's just say I cast Earthquake uh, for five, so it does five damage, uh, and now each opponent now has a copy of Earthquake for five. Uh, my last opponent is going to do his Earthquake first, so it does five damage to me, and then also five damage to uh, the Brash Taunter. But because I have Fire Emancipation, uh, the Brash Taunter can do 15 damage to in, to a target opponent. Uh, and then the next opponent is going to have Earthquake for 5 and the same thing, and so on. So, yeah, like potentially you could kill all your opponents, um, you know, that turn. And, uh, yeah, you can um, hopefully end the game that way or at least speed the game up for game 2. Uh, there's actually a card called uh, Death Wish which, funny enough, is legal in Commander. Uh, it says you lose half your life and search for a card outside the game to put in your hand. Um, and again, Hive Mind will copy that. Everyone will lose half their life. So that's kind of another way um, you can use this strategy, which ties right into uh, this set of cards here I want to talk about. You have Hive Mind, and then you combine that right away with Wound Reflection. Wound Reflection says at the beginning of each instep, each opponent, 
loses life equal to the life they have lost this turn. So if you have Cruel Bargain, you have Doomsday, you have, you know, Peer into the Abyss, uh, they lose half of their life. Well, you know, they lose half of their life uh, in the order of the stack in which it comes. So eventually they do. Uh, and then at the end of your turn, they are your opponent, so they lose the other half, and uh, you just win the game. The problem with this, though, I would say is um, because you're going to lose half your life, and then half your life, and then half your life, uh, at the end of it, you might be left with um, not a lot of life, maybe single digits. So someone could shock you, or someone could uh, deal instant damage and kill you before it gets to your end step, uh, and then you'd be quite sad. So you might want to back up the strategy with a Platinum Angel or one of the Lich cards uh, so that you cannot lose the game. Uh, that is just uh, one way which you could do this. So yeah, these are uh, that's my what I call the speedrun challenge. And then finally, we have the Jank win combos. So if you have any of these pack cards, uh, pack Negation, Summoner's Pack, Pack of the Titan, and Slaughter Pack, or the Intervention Pack. So they all do something relative to their color identity. Uh, counter something, search for something, destroy something, uh, etc. And then it says, at the beginning of your next upkeep, you must pay uh, this amount of mana. And if you don't, you lose the game. So let's just say, let's take Slaughter Pack for example. If I cast that spell with Hive Mind, Hive Mind triggers, and everyone has a Slaughter Pack. Uh, they can destroy a non-black creature, you know. That's pretty good, I guess. Uh, but they must pay two generic and a black. So if they don't have black in their deck, there's no. Uh, that's not part of their, their commander's identity. Uh, and they don't have treasure, and they don't have any mana dorks that can produce mana of any color. Uh, they simply lose the game um, as their turn begins. And so this strategy works if you're in five colors and you use all the packs. And I guess it would work better with the um, the ones that use two pips, Pack Negation, Summoner's Pack, and, and Intervention Pack, because they, they even if they have one, they need actually two. So this is something you can do. I would call it jank because it's not 100% um, consistent. Uh, it might kill one player, uh, but in Commander, uh, people are bound to have treasure or some alternate way of getting uh, tr uh, mana. So, yeah, oh, by the way, you can uh, tutor for these with uh, Teloria's West. Um, that's that land that has Transmute to get a zero-cost spell. Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, by the way, you can do another kind of jank uh, win here is with each of these take an extra turn spells in red. Final Fortune, Last Chance, Alchemist's Gambit, and Warrior's Oath. Uh, but the caveat here is it doesn't really work with just these cards, just Hive Might and all those, uh, because um, you are kind of each one is each one in the stack is replacing um, the one before it. So uh, it says take an extra turn after this one, and then the next one in the stack is going to replace the one before it. And so the rules say, uh, particularly here, rule five hundred point seven that the most recently created churn will be the one taken first. Uh, so because you, um, the caster, are the last one in the stack, let's say for Final Fortune, you are the last one to create an extra churn, so you are the first one to have the extra churn. So because you have the extra churn, uh, you are going to be the first one to lose at the end of that churn. Uh, and you might still fulfill your purpose there because... Uh, your opponents still have the trigger and will lose at the end of that turn. Uh, but if you want to get around that, you do need to throw in Sundial the Infinite uh, or Obeka to end your turn uh, before you get to your end step. So that could be a valid strategy there. Give your opponents a bad card and then um, watch them lose. Uh, I do also want to talk about Goblin Game. I don't know where to put this card. It's a funny card. Um, it's in my deck, uh, and it's a it's uh, a chaos card. You could say, you could also say that it fits with the um, the speed run, you know, deal a bunch of damage, you know, strategy. Uh, and it just might be a bad card. I'm not sure. It it's kind of the chance. Uh, 
So it says each player hides at least one object, then all players reveal those objects simultaneously. Uh, and most of the time you're, you might use dice. Uh, you could actually, the rules say you could write down a number on a sheet of paper. Uh, so each player loses life equal to the number of objects they revealed. Uh, so if you hid five objects, you lose five life. And the player that revealed the fewest objects loses half their life. So if this happens uh, four times, this, uh, this spell, um, it, it could be that the same player loses half their life four times. Um, that'd be kind of sad. Um, it could, you know, happen that, uh, everyone loses half their life, uh, because if it's tied, then they all lose half their life. So, but, uh, it's a funny card. Hey, maybe it works for you with Hive Mind. I, I, I include it, but it's actually never happened that, that combo. So, uh, one last thing you can do with Hive Mind is throw in Shazara Hard for two white. Uh, each player, uh, you know, has a mini game, and uh, yeah, they use their library as the mini game. And uh, if the losing player loses half their life, uh, yeah. And this actually isn't legal. This is kind of a joke at the end here. Uh, and even if you could do it, I don't think you would want to sit through a mini game inside a game, and then do that four times. Uh, but yeah, those are four uh, strategies or ways you can use Hive Mind uh, in Commander in Magic. So I'd love to hear how you use Hive Mind and how it uh, affects your games and what are your general thoughts on the Hive Mind. Is it too silly? Is it, uh, is it worth playing uh, outside of chaos? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you around in the next video. Thank you, guys.